Hearts of Idaho are timeless, barely touched by humans. In these places we can lose ourselves and find something greater. To experience Idaho's wild places is to find renewal for the spirit. Artists have known this for millennia. Today they still seek out these locations of color, texture, and light. I feel like I do see things through a different lens because I'm thinking of how I would recreate this, how would I bring it home. Moments are what I remember. You know, it's not things I want. I want moments. I want experiences. It's crucial for human existence to have wild places. When I come here, I'm inspired by the cliffs and the forms and the shapes that the canyon delivers. Fortunately in Idaho, many timeless places remain. Landscapes that have escaped the influence of man untouched pockets and peaks that offer both refuge and inspiration. They are part of what make Idaho, Idaho, and make us better off for having them. I was born in Idaho, I've lived here all my life, and it surprised me when we made Idaho the Movie 1 that there were a couple of places in that movie I had not been yet. You know, you could spend a lifetime living here, and, and I have, and not see it all. I wrote a newspaper column for 40 years, and I often wrote about far-flung corners of Idaho. And now, instead of putting it in print, I'm uh, helping put it on film so people can see visually the same things that I see when I get out to these wonderful places. There's a reason that there are so many paintings and photographs of nature. Nature has inspired people. It just opens up your mind, it opens your soul, and, and it gives you joy. We all need to get out in these wild open spaces. Idaho's nickname is the Gem State, but it's probably better known for wilderness. Idaho has more than a dozen named wilderness areas totaling nearly five million acres. These are places where man is a visitor. The machines of modern life are conspicuously absent and the future of intricate ecosystems forever protected. Idaho's wilderness areas include the storied Middle Fork of the Salmon River, the Sawtooths, and other natural wonders. Beyond Idaho's protected wilderness areas, almost 70% of the state is public land. Vast deserts cut deep by ancient glaciers and massive mountains pushed skyward by forces far below. These are lands of clear, clean rivers, immense canyons, and mountains that beckon to be explored. In 2015, Congress created three new wilderness areas right in the heart of Idaho. The areas surround and protect the Boulder and White Cloud Ranges and recognize what locals have known for generations. These mountains are among the most magnificent in America. Cherished by backpackers, the White Clouds harbor about 150 peaks over 10,000 feet. 
Early settlers named the White Clouds for the soaring granite mountains that mingle with the sky. The tallest, the imposing Castle Peak, reaches nearly 12,000 feet. Hidden away from major highways, the White Clouds may be the most spectacular range most Americans have never known. For those in on the secret, the White Clouds offer an abundance of clear, high elevation lakes and patches of alpine woodland. The delicately balanced habitat supports an impressive range of wildlife. For some, just being here is a spiritual experience. Idaho's late U.S. Senator Frank Church felt it and offered this advice. Save some time in your lives for the outdoors, where you can be a witness to the wonder of God. We're both so deeply drawn to the mountains. I think the spiritual and emotional effects it has on us makes us a little bit, I think, more vibrant and better. Be better human beings. Some people's comfort zone is a book or a movie or a seat on the 50-yard line. Suzanne and Patrick Chetwoods is clinging to the face of a cliff. Slick Rock, near McCall, Idaho, is a thousand feet tall. One of Idaho's longest backcountry climbs and their self-described happy place. Because being central Idaho, there's really hardly any people ever on it. It's kind of our own little wonderland and playland on it and it gives you so many different options and ways to spend a day on a big rock. To them, hanging from a granite wall with nothing but empty space between them and the ground is therapeutic. They find the stillness of the mountains and the focus it takes to climb them a sanctuary from the noise and pace of city life. I get bombarded in my daily life. I need to have less so that I can focus and be truly present. When we get here, it's like, it's just distilled and, and it's just, what you're hearing is pure and it's clear. That is an element that's really a part of it, connecting with nature in that way and, and the reboot of your soul experiencing something like that. An artist, Suzanne translates her impressions of the natural world to canvas. Where others see a gray rock wall, she sees the colors of the sky and forest reflected in crystals of quartz. I feel like I do see things through a different lens because I'm thinking of how I would recreate this, how would I bring it home and put this on a two-dimensional surface and take all of this energy that we're experiencing in nature and then try and charge a canvas with that kind of energy. Both Suzanne and Patrick hope their children will find the same treasures in Idaho's wild places. And a passion for preserving them for the well-being of souls yet to come. It is tremendously important <laughs> to reboot in this day and age. There's so many reasons. It's a place where I find that baseline and I can then enjoy everything else and it's a good balance of life. Sunrise in the Sawtooths. As day breaks on one of Idaho's most well-known mountain ranges, light illuminates the sharp features that define this range. Serrated peaks, rocky spires, needles pointing skyward. Pine trees cling to impossibly steep, rocky cliffs. 
Secret lakes shimmer in the sun. The sawtooths have been featured in magazines, newspapers, television programs, and on countless postcards. Most photos of the sawtooths are taken from the ground. Seen from the air, they are perhaps even more striking. Words that spring to mind when visiting here, massive, vast, majestic. But few words can express the feeling of being reduced to insignificance by the power of nature. North Central Idaho is a land of contrasts. Mountains and plains, alpine and desert. The terrain transforms from one mile to the next. The Palouse is rich farmland, gently rolling hills of lush green in spring, a multicolored checkerboard of ripening crops in summer. Hell's Canyon is desert, carved by the Snake River, the lifeblood of the region. More than a thousand feet deeper than the Grand Canyon, it is the deepest river gorge in America. The Selway Bitterroot Wilderness is rugged, glacier-carved peaks and ridges. Here, the Bitterroot Range forms a formidable barrier between Idaho and Montana. It's so remote that much of it has never known a human footprint. Just south of the Selway Bitterroot lies the Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness. Few places in America match its sheer magnitude. 2.3 million acres of uninterrupted solitude. Winding through these two colossal wilderness areas is a narrow passage, a corridor that calls to all who seek a journey deep into the wild. My mind goes to really wonderful places when I'm on a motorcycle. Twisty, windy roads, Highway 14 getting here. And it becomes a rhythm. The river's flowing, you feel the wind, you smell the pine trees. Just to get to where the pavement ends, it's a fantastic thing in itself. Greg Sims is a photographer by trade and an explorer at heart. When I see a sign that says pavement ends, then I know I'm in for some fun. Sims combines his work with adventure motorcycle touring to satisfy his need to spend time in wild places. This is what it's all about, taking that chance, pushing a little bit further, what's around the corner, all that kind of stuff, and around the corner is fantastic. The Magruder Corridor is little changed from when its only human visitors were Nez Perce Indians. Today, the 101-mile primitive road is traveled only by the hardiest of men and machines. The ride is pretty steep and rugged and a lot of boulders, a lot of really intense uh, moments where you're just hanging on and trying to power through portions of the ride that uh, are pretty gnarly. But the payoff is worth every ounce of sweat that you put into it because the vistas that we're seeing and there's nothing like it. Fires have left their mark on the Magruder. Blackened trees stand like sentinels along a ribbon of road that seems to stretch into eternity. It's possible to listen long and hard here and hear nothing but the absence of sound. Moments are what I remember. You know, it's not things I want. I want moments. I want experiences. Sim's ultimate goal is to capture in pictures the essence of this wild place. For me, what I do when I do photography, when you're standing in a place and you're looking at it, the emotion you feel while you're there is what you try to put into the image so that when somebody sees it, 
they feel what you're feeling. That's what I'm trying to do. If you can see, if you're truly awake and truly alive, and truly look, there's so much amazement around. And in Idaho, it's endless. On the scenic Selway River, one of nature's greatest migratory feats plays out every summer. Adult Chinook salmon, now nearly 900 miles from the Pacific Ocean, face off with Selway Falls, overcoming the churning, turbulent wall of water requires a full-blown aerial assault. For these determined fish, the instinct to survive is more powerful than any current. There are places that inspire such reverence for nature that for some they're akin to being in church. North Idaho's Devoto Cedar Grove is such a place. Pulitzer Prize winning author and Western historian Bernard Devoto camped here while editing his abridged version of the Lewis and Clark journals. His favorite spot was a massive cedar tree where he could hear the melody of a nearby creek while he worked. There's something about such a place, the stillness, the dappled light, the centuries it's taken to produce its giants, that touches our spirits and commands our respect. To stand in its shadows and admire its beauty is to know that last best places still exist. On the west side of the Continental Divide, the Selkirk Mountains straddle Idaho's Panhandle. The massive range, part of the Northern Rockies, extends for 200 miles and reaches into Canada. In winter and spring, prevailing winds push maritime air all the way from the Pacific Ocean. The moisture cascades like waterfalls. Runoff from the Selkirks feeds North Idaho's lake country. Here, sprawling waters glimmer like jewels. Waterfowl grace the skies. On a sunny day, Idaho's big lakes seem to stretch forever. Lake Coeur d'Alene is the most populated, and it's been a vacation mecca for generations. Scenic Priest Lake is remote and wild, a lovely getaway in any season. Lake Pend Oreille is Idaho's largest lake and the nation's fifth deepest. North Idaho's abundance of water and woods has helped shape not only the landscape, but a time-honored craft and art form. You definitely can't think of the lakes without thinking of the boats. Hayden Lake is one of North Idaho's beautiful but lesser-known lakes. Like its neighbors in the north, Hayden Lake is a playground for classic wooden boats. Boy, I, you know, it's almost... It's a hard thing to put into words, um, you know, but it's just the feel of a wood boat being in it, listening to the water lap against the hull, 
you know, the look of it, the whole experience about being in it. You know, any wood boat owner knows what I'm talking about. I'm not so sure that they could put it into words as well themselves. You know, it's just it's a very satisfying feeling being out in them. Andy Kerfoot is an Idaho native. He grew up exploring the forest and waters of North Idaho and says he'll never live anywhere else. Small wonder that he found a way to combine wood and water to create art. They would always tell people I'm less of a boat guy, I'm probably more of an artist. I, I just look at it as something that I can refine and, you know, just got good at it, you know, and it's a challenge. I love doing it. Kerfoot has been restoring wooden boats for nearly two decades. With hundreds of hours of sanding and up to 15 coats of varnish, a major restoration can take as long as two years. Dreams of summer days on the lake keep him going during the long winter hours he spends in his shop. He has trouble falling asleep without the sound of lapping waves. And, on a really good night, the hum of a distant motor propelling a boat he's restored over the lake he loves best. I've lived in enough places to say that I'd visit everywhere else, but I'll always live here. Famous naturalist John Muir said, keep close to nature's heart, climb a mountain or spend a week in the woods, and wash your spirit clean. On the route of the Hiawatha, visitors can refresh their spirits with a ride through one of America's great passages. Originally built for the Milwaukee Railroad, the route of the Hiawatha is now a world-class bike trail. It winds through the Bitterroot Mountains along the Idaho-Montana border. Fifteen miles of gravel pathway across seven towering wooden trestles. Riders are treated to eagle-eye views of dense woods, wildlife, and waterfalls. Along the way, the Hiawatha passes through nine railroad tunnels. The longest is more than one and a half miles. Truly a journey through the heart of these mountains. Across Idaho's landscapes, geothermal activity deep underground creates a heavenly byproduct, hot springs. It's doubtful that even the most passionate fans of hot springs have made it to all of them. There are dozens in almost every corner of the state. They come in virtually every shape, size, and condition, from tiny, unimproved pools big enough for one or two people to swimming pool size. Some you can drive to, others require hours or days of hiking to get there. Most are natural hot springs on public land with no user fees. Just one more way, Idaho's public lands give back. Winter in Idaho's mountains is beautiful beyond words. Idaho has more peaks over 10,000 feet than any other Rocky Mountain state. Great snow and ski areas make the most of it, from modest, family-oriented operations to world-class resorts.
One of the most popular is Brundage Mountain Resort near the town of McCall. Brundage is known for its wide runs, over 300 inches of snowfall each year, and for the adventurous, some of the best snowcat skiing around. For those who seek a wild winter adventure, Idaho Ski Areas deliver. Winter comes early and stays late in the central Idaho hamlet of Bergdorf, where snow lies heavy on forested slopes nearly half of the year. From the first snows until mountain roads are passable in the spring, the only access is by snowmobile. That doesn't stop those seeking a winter interlude with a steamy twist. Bergdorf is the setting for one of Idaho's most popular hot springs. Fans of Bergdorf's rustic serenity cover the spectrum from young children to grandparents, the unknown to the famous. Singer-songwriter Carol King called it home for years. In summer, Bergdorf becomes an idyllic Idaho getaway. It's the favored retreat for a homegrown Idaho musician. Been all around this world just to come back to you. Oh, my love, my sweet love. Singer songwriter Elan Jewell has traveled the world, but her favorite place to be is Idaho. In her music and in her lyrics, she paints timeless portraits. Elan's songs capture her feelings for the place she calls home. Worried Mind is a love song to Idaho. It's home and it's family and it's my roots, or my roots, I guess, as we say here. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's my inspiration. Rustic Bergdorf, where she spent time as a child, is where her muse speaks loudest. No television, no tweets, no distractions. She stays in a remote cabin that was old when her grandparents were young. By hand at a worn wooden desk is where she writes best. I think there will always be songs here because it's a place where I can listen. Out here, I don't know if it's just in the wind, if the words and music are just in the soil, but I just, uh, I can listen and, and they just happen. Say hello to Boundary County If you make it up that way much of Elan's music embodies nostalgia for home, a place she had to leave to learn to love. It's important to Elan that she and her husband raise their two-year-old daughter Mavis in her home state. She looks forward to watching Mavis explore the same wild places that she knew as a child. Wander away from the song Boundary County is about all of Idaho, all of the beautiful, wide open spaces here. It's really my, my ode to my home state. Why I left, I can't say why. I can't 
It struck me as a really funny thing that I had to travel all around the world in order to have the perspective and realize that I started out in the place where I was supposed to be. Boundary County, if you make it up that way, I don't get around as much as I did. At first glance, desolate, dry, seemingly endless acres of empty. Much of southern Idaho is desert, a sea of sagebrush with occasional fissures of life-sustaining water. Look a little deeper and you'll find a rich landscape that transcends time. The Bruno River Canyon cuts through ancient lava flows to depths of 1,200 feet. The Snake River dominates the southern Idaho landscape. It is the largest tributary of the Columbia River, feeding farms and communities across the state. At Shoshone Falls, the Snake River cascades 212 vertical feet to form what has been called the Niagara of the West. The Snake River Canyon is a quarter mile wide and 500 feet deep in places. It offers expansive views and classic western sunsets. A hike through the canyon below Swan Falls takes visitors back in time to when the only Americans were Native Americans. At Wee's Bar, boulders in a field of dry grass were inscribed centuries ago. They comprise one of Idaho's largest and best preserved collections of petroglyphs. Some are thought to be markers of game trails or resources others artwork associated with ancient rituals. Wee's Bar is a place to see Idaho as its original occupants and pioneers saw it. Little has changed in this rocky landscape, where clouds, sun, stars put on a show around the clock and across the centuries. To visit Wee's Bar is to know that the majesty of the natural world is enduring and timeless. You gotta remember that when you come to visit the rim of the Snake River Canyon, you're looking at a place that essentially looks like it has for 14,000 years. No one knows this wild canyon or the birds for which it is famous better than Norm Nelson. He's been hiking, climbing, and photographing it since he was a boy. These days, the Snake River Canyon inspires Norm's art as a painter. When you come to a place that has a visual inspiration to you, and you paint that. In order to paint it successfully, you have to really look at it and think about how to translate what you see to paper or canvas. And that creates a huge, intimate understanding of where you are. Norm's life story is woven into this landscape, a place his father loved and helped permanently protect the Morley Nelson Snake River Birds of Prey National Conservation Area is named for Norm's father. Well, it looks like, I mean, it's certainly big enough to be a golden eagle nest. Oh, it's definitely a golden eagle. 
The area is home to the greatest concentration of nesting birds of prey in North America and perhaps the world. It probably has a really young eaglet or two. You've got all these canyon walls with the prevailing wind blowing up the walls so the birds have something to soar on and which to hunt from. And you've got all this loomy soil allowing all the mammals to dig in and burrow. And so you have a perfect ecosystem for birds of prey because you have a cavity for them to nest in, you have the wind for them to soar on, and then you have a strong prey base for all 486,000 acres of what's conserved. Norm Nelson has found a lifetime of inspiration in the canyon's pristine solitude and contentment in knowing that his father's legacy and the canyon's future are secure. When I come here, I'm inspired by the cliffs and the forms and the shapes that the canyon delivers. And it gets you thinking about where you are and why it's been here for so long and how it sustained itself. And it sort of sustains you to, to visit it and be reinforced by that. Southwest Idaho's shoe fly oolite formations create otherworldly impressions because they're from another world. They were formed millions of years ago by wave action in ancient Lake Idaho. Oolites, or egg stones, are formed when calcium carbonate adheres to grains of sand. The sculpture garden seen here is one of the world's largest freshwater lake bed oolites. The area's unique composition supports a variety of fossils and rare plants. Erosion has created arches, faces, maybe even gargoyles. What you see is limited only by your imagination. Don't confuse the little city of rocks with its larger brother, the city of rocks a couple of counties away. It's so little known that even some locals don't know it exists. Wind sculpted hoodoos form improbable shapes, pinnacles, mushrooms, a giant anvil perched atop a boot. Here and there, wildflowers blossom among the rock and sage. Eagles have a proverbial bird's eye view of the haunting landscape. Hiking and primitive camping are permitted And when the sun sets and the stars come out, the setting is perfect for ghost stories. You can drive for a few hours in eastern Idaho and see about every kind of landscape imaginable. Big Southern Butte dominates the Eastern Snake River Plain. It's one of the largest volcanic domes on Earth. Head northeast to St. Anthony and you'll find 10,000 acres of sand dunes, a playground for off-road enthusiasts. On a clear day, you can see the majestic Tetons. Drive a bit farther and you'll be at one of the West's last untamed major waterfalls. Mesa Falls impresses with both its upper and lower cascades. 
If you bring nothing else on the drive, be sure to pack your camera. A stormy day with brooding clouds may be the best time to visit Hell's Half Acre, a 222 square mile lava flow in eastern Idaho. Ominous weather and otherworldly rock shapes testify to the aptness of its name. The setting isn't entirely hellish, however. Here and there among the contorted rocks and chasms, Indian paintbrush and other wildflowers add splashes of welcome color. Three trails cross Hell's Half Acre, but if you go, be sure to wear sturdy shoes and watch your step. The lava is sharp and unforgiving. If you fall into one of these fissures, well, let's just say it wouldn't be fun. When they think of caverns, most people think of New Mexico's Carlsbad Caverns. But Idaho has a fairly impressive one of its own. Southeast Idaho's Minnetonka Cave is nine subterranean rooms of stalactites, stalagmites, and banded travertine, limestone deposits bearing an uncanny resemblance to bacon. There's an underground shower, but not one you'll want to jump into. The cave's year-round temperature is 40 degrees. Five species of bats live in the cave, and to prevent introduction of a bat disease, visitors are asked not to bring anything that's been in another cave or a mine. If you go, be sure to bring a sweater or jacket and be prepared to walk 444 steps down and back up again. Once a boom town, then a ghost town, the southeast Idaho town of Chesterfield has settled into a serene quietude as a backwater tourist attraction. Ghosts of the past seem almost tangible on this misty morning. An antique stove gives the illusion of waiting for a flame, pioneer buildings and farm equipment for their owner's return. Founded in 1881 by Mormon pioneers, Chesterfield succumbed to hard economic times and a railroad's decision to bypass it, and by the 1940s was virtually abandoned. Today, it's a time capsule of restored buildings eerily evoking times past. A crack of thunder breaks the spell. The storm gives way to sunshine and rainbows, suitable for Chesterfield's current role as a gathering place for history buffs and sightseers. Bear Lake, which straddles the Idaho-Utah border, is a multi-use area in the truest sense. It's also a weekend and vacation retreat for boaters, anglers, and families drawn to its sandy beaches. In the right light, it's a photographer's dream. Suspended limestone deposits in the water turn it a vivid shade of turquoise. The color gives the lake its nickname, the Caribbean of the Rockies. The Bear Lake National Wildlife Refuge is one of North America's most important nesting and staging areas for migrating waterfowl. It's 18,000 acres of cattail marsh, open water, and meadows home to more than 160 species of birds. Wildlife managers patrol the refuge on fan boats, enjoying a view that few of us are ever privileged to see. You could spend days here just watching the birds, 
In flight, these herons could almost be latter-day pterodactyls. On the ground, they could almost be ballerinas. Their numbers seem endless, their movements spellbinding. Farther north, along the lush shores of the Henry's Fork of the Snake River lies Flat Ranch, a working cattle ranch owned and operated by the Nature Conservancy. It's also home to one of Idaho's highest concentrations of long-billed curlews. With long legs and a long curved bill, curlews are the largest shorebirds in North America. The most famous among them may be Henrietta. Hey girl, good to see you again. A female name for her favorite nesting grounds. Henrietta is the first bird that we captured and tracked from the ranch here. She's walking across the little creek there. Nice, look at that. Trapping and tracking curlews help scientists learn more about why curlew populations are declining across North America and why here, on Flat Ranch, the numbers have stayed high. The Nature Conservancy's sustainable grazing program may be a big part of the reason why. It keeps cattle from overgrazing, preserving nesting grounds for curlews and grasses for ranching. It behooves us to see what we can do to keep as many of these native species alive and thriving as long as we can while also still thriving ourselves. Henrietta the long-billed curlew may be the most famous bird in Idaho, thanks to a tracking device that maps her migration path online. Henrietta fans can follow her movements and an online science curriculum teaches children about the plight of the long-billed curlew. Here's hoping that Henrietta's story kindles a desire to preserve and expand the habitat that all wildlife need to survive. Idaho's open spaces offer more than recreation. Farmers and ranchers have relied on them for generations. In the past, agriculture and conservation interests have often been at odds. But in recent years, ranchers and conservationists have found common ground, working together to protect open space, habitat for wildlife, and a traditional way of life. Ranchers like the Kerner family of Weezer, Idaho, are dedicated to protecting the land that has supported their family for three generations. They and other progressive ranchers appreciate not only what the land gives them, but its natural beauty as well. There is also a certain beauty to be found in the lifestyle they embrace a lifestyle their children intend to carry on for as long as this range remains. It can take a lifetime to experience Idaho's diverse natural wonders. Residents and visitors alike are fortunate to have these magical places where we find inspiration for the mind and a balm for the soul. Idaho has space. It has room for me to be who I want to be. It has room to think and room for the muse, room for inspiration. If they were poems, they would be odes, all of my paintings an ode to Idaho. But every once in a while, you know, I need to get out. It drives my creativity and it makes me feel more connected to my life. Just all this stuff enters emotionally when I'm outside. To borrow from Jimmy Carter, 
love of nature is a common language that transcends political and social boundaries. But we find common ground in the beauty of a wild river, a craggy mountain range, or a heart-stopping canyon. The other thing about public land is it is public land. You get to utilize it, camp on it, fish on it, photograph it, paint it, enjoy it. These places are part of our heritage, and it's our responsibility to protect and preserve them. For ourselves and for those who follow us, the timeless parts of Idaho need to stay that way. Timeless, pristine, and cherished. <laughs>